Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to ITW 2024. We are streaming live here on day two of this amazing event. And I am Jamie Scott Okataya, CEO of JSA, here with JSA TV, your newsroom for digital infrastructure headlines. And joining me here today is my good friend, Mr. Mark Cooper, Vice President of Market and Business Development for Atlas Edge. And if you don't know Atlas Edge, well, we're going to correct that right now, but a data center leader reimagining the future of European data infrastructure. That's a that's a good line for you guys. It's not a bad tagline, is it? <laughs> welcome, welcome, Mark. Thank you. I mean, it's great to see you again. Great to see the team. Oh, it's 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 been uh, it's been so great just getting to uh, to really understand uh, the incredible mission Atlas Edge is uh, is delivering for us. So let us stop there. What is uh, what is your role and, and we're, what is Atlas Edge for those who may not know? So for, for those that don't know Atlas Edge, we're a, a pan-European data center operator. Our focus is on tier two and tier three markets. We see that that's really where we see the growth happening, both from an enterprise perspective, but also from the, the hyperscalers as well. Uh, and my role and my team, so we look at market demand. So kind of trying to have a crystal ball, figure out where do we think is going to be the next um, hot market in Europe? We also listen to the customers and take that into consideration as well. And then the other side of it is business development. So it's looking at market trends. It's really listening to the customers, understanding, and then combining the market side and the BD side to kind of drive the direction that we go, either from a product perspective, um, customer relations perspective, or expansion as well. Well, talking hot markets, uh, you have a Lisbon project coming up. Can you tell us a little bit more there? Yeah, sure. I mean, I mean, Lisbon for us is it's an incredibly exciting project because it's it's our first organic entry. So a lot of what we have came through um, acquisition. Mm -hmm. Lisbon, it's the first time we're going into a new market. So we're not currently present in Portugal. So we're going in. Uh, and Lisbon, we believe, has it's an amazing opportunity. So for us as a company, but also for the, the market in general, because if you look at what's happening with the subsea connectivity into Lisbon as well, yes. it, Area, has, right? it has the potential to be um, almost like a, a mini Marseille. It has, yeah. There's an opportunity to become this new um, subsea interconnection hub. So for us, it's 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 a, just an amazing opportunity. Amazing opportunity, absolutely. And I mean, just uh, let's talk about your reach across Europe too for a second. How many pops now? Uh, we're now in uh, we're now in 14 markets across Europe, and we're constantly looking to to extend that as well. So I think we're the yeah in terms of coverage. We're one of the largest players with a focus on the, the tier two markets. So when you think Europe, you're thinking Atlas Edge, basically. Yeah, exactly. Can I say that? You Great. can say that. <laughs> <laughs> so what impact do you expect to have with this Lisbon project on your larger, local, broader European market? Yeah, I mean, uh, as I touched on, so we believe that Lisbon will become the next interconnection hub in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look back at what happened with Marseille, Marseille originally was about just subsea connectivity, then the CDNs came, then the hyperscalers came, and we really believe that you're going to see the same happen in Lisbon as well. And with the subsea connectivity that's coming, it's it's uniquely positioned because you have connectivity from South America, North America, Africa as well, and then uh, up into mainland Europe. So we just think it's perfectly positioned. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I always follow my subsea guys. And I'm like, where are you choosing next? That's that's the next big pop. So yeah. I, I fully concur. For whatever that's right. <laughs> but okay, looking ahead. Yeah. What trends are you seeing on the horizon that we really need to start paying attention to? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the one I touched on already, which is the this drive for people to go into tier two markets, tier two cities, and obviously the the one that's on everyone's lips is AI. Yeah. And I think a lot of the market is trying to figure out, well, what is AI? What's happening? We're kind of on this this hype cycle at the moment. You kind of you've, it reminds me of the early two thousands where you had the the massive boom there. Um, and what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of demand for the AI platforms for the, the Nordics. And that's driven by the fact that the power there is, is extremely cheap. But then if you look into Southern Europe and markets like Lisbon, you have a lot of cheap solar power available there. So we think you'll start to see these AI platforms rolling there. But this is where we're, we're so early in this process. It's very difficult to determine you know, who, are giving, who, who the winners will be. A lot of people talk about CoreWeave because they're, they're so far ahead. Obviously, everyone talks about NVIDIA. But then you've got companies like AMD and, and Intel coming with their products as well. So I think AI is going to drive a lot of the demand in the DC industry. It may drive changes in technology. You know, people talk about liquid cooling, immersion cooling. And I think it, it, that kind of ties in well to your theme around greener data as well. Well, 
thank you so much. I was going to say, I love that we're talking alternative energies when we're talking AI. Um, again, sustainability and AI entwined, yep. right? Like, we're not going to get there without the other, even though it's a big bin with consumer, let's yep. not lie. But, uh, but I feel like the answer is now uh, within our reach, hopefully. So, yep. fingers crossed there. Greener data. Yay. Yes. Um, all right. So, um, Thank you so much for joining us on day two. It's a, it's a big day. There's so much uh, pressure on your amazing time. So thank you for taking this time, being generous with it, and sharing your insights. As always, amazing. Thank you. So always a pleasure talking to you and the team. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. Happy networking. <laughs>